Hey there, Hampshire Chemistry. Let's welcome back to the second video for our gas laws. We are going to be taking a look at continuing our goal of identifying, which we saw in the last video, but now we're going to be talking about using some of our gas laws in some various different problems. So, if you take a look at Haiku, you can see our Boyles Charles Gay Lussac's law sheet. We're going to be solving each problem, showing all our work, and making sure to be careful with our sig figs at the very end here together. So, Let's take a look at some examples. Remember to have your notes handy. I have like my little cheat sheet here, my different equations that's going to help us out. But let's go ahead and take a look at an example like number one. Okay, my first goal is going to be to figure out which gas law I'm going to need to use for my equation in this problem. So I'm going to go ahead and annotate some of these guys with you. And I see that I have a gas that is at 20 degrees Celsius. So I notice I have a temperature that is increasing to 40 degrees Celsius. So right off the bat, I'm going to see this as my T1. Remember, we represent the 1 means before, and the 2 means the after. So if I saw that if this was flipped, it might say we had 20 degrees, that 40 degrees that went to 20. But you can see we started at 20, and we went to 40. And then it also says we have an original pressure oop, of 5 atm. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that as my P1. I know it's the P1 because it says original. That's my starting amount. And it's asking what is the new pressure. So, hey, that pressure is going to be changing. So I do not know my P2 in this scenario. So I'm going to look at my different equations. Which one of my equations involves a change in pressure and a change in temperature? Pressure and volume? Nope. Volume and temperature? Oh, that's temperature? Nope. Oh, but here. Gay-Lussac's law has pressure and temperature. So I know that I'm going to be using that equation in my setup. So let's go ahead and write that equation down here. Oh, looks like we do have a reminder from last video that if we are working with temperatures, we need to make sure that those temperatures are in Kelvin. Okay, so why don't we do that right now before we use any, plug any numbers in or set up an equation. The way I find my Kelvin temperature is I simply take my Celsius temperature and I add 273. So let's add 273 degrees to each of these. And I can figure out what my Kelvin temperature is. So my actual T1 here is going to be 293. And I can double check that in my calculator just to make sure. 273 plus 20, Oop. yep, 293. And I can do 40 plus 273. And I hopefully should get 310, 313. Perfect. So 313, the way we show Kelvin is just with a K. So these will be our new temperatures, our T1 and our T2 that will get plugged in. So let's set up that new equation. Okay, we have Gay-Lussac's law. I'm going to write out our law. Okay, P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. Okay, so we know that we're looking for that P2. So what I would want to do is I want to rearrange this equation. Now there's a lot of things you can do to rearrange this. I find the easiest for most high school students is that we're going to do something called cross multiplying. So instead of like multiplying one thing and moving it over and doing some crazy algebra, all I'm going to do here is I'm going to take what's across from each other and I'm going to multiply them. So I'm going to rearrange this equation by creating, I'm going to take T1 times P2. And so I'm going to go ahead and write that down here, T1 times P2. I'm crossing my x. And this is now going to be equal to the other cross, P1 times T, oh, that's T2. Making sure we're keeping track of where our variables are. And now I actually wanted P2, so now it's a simple, simple matter of just dividing over my T1. Okay, so my P2 is going to be equal to my P1 times my T2 divided by my T1. So we already have all those things written out for us because we nicely annotated our problem. So my P1, that was my 5 atm. And I'm going to multiply by my T2. Oh, make sure to use that Kelvin temperature. And then I'm going to divide by the T1. Again, don't forget we're using Kelvin. So we can check to make sure that our units are canceling. Hey, I'm going to have K cancel with K. And now all that's left is my ATM. We're finding a pressure, so that makes sense. 
Let's go ahead and tippy tap into our calculator. Hopefully you have your calculator out too and you're working with me. I am gonna take that five ATM times 313. Oh. Hit enter just to get in my calculator and divide by 293. All right, so I get an answer of 5.341. We can check our sig figs. I have three sig figs, three sig figs, three sig figs. So I'm gonna to round to one, two, three and keep it at three, four, ATM. Okay. So we have our problem solved and we can make sure that this guy is the right answer by doing two things. First off, we can check our relationship. We can see that the temperature increased in this scenario so based on our rules for Gay-Lussac's law, we said this in our previous video, that if we saw a increase in our temperature, we should also see an increase in our pressure. Did we see that? It went from 5 to 5.34. That makes sense. It went up. That tells me that this is the correct answer. I could also look at the answers on the bottom of the page. So let's set up one more here together, and then I'll let you guys work on some more examples on your own. In number two, we have a 760 millimeters of mercury. Oh, so this is something we haven't talked about much yet. 760 millimeters of mercury is another way that you can measure pressure of a substance. So I'm gonna tell you right now that this is my pressure for a substance. It's, I'm gonna call it the P1. Okay? And then I have a 750 milliliters to 500 milliliters. Oop, I see a dot, so it tells me it's gonna be three sig figs. So this is going to be my volume one and volume two. It says, what is the new pressure? So again, I'm gonna be looking for my P2, except this time we're not going to be using Gay-Lussac's law, right? Because we, that was with pressure and temperature. We can review our gas laws here. This guy has pressure and volume, so boils would make the most sense here. So let's go ahead and write that equation down. Good thing about boils is we don't need to use any weird Kelvin stuff. We just have pressures and volumes. And I want to find P2, so all I'm gonna do is just divide over V2, so this side cancels, and P2 is going to be equal to P1 times V1 over V2. So we can just go ahead and plug those numbers in. We know our P1, that is this 760 MMHG, that stands for millimeters of mercury. I'm multiplying by my V1, that's the 750 milliliters. And then I'm dividing by the V2, that is my 500 milliliters. Again, let's check to make sure our answer, our units cancel out. I have ML canceling with ML. So those guys are gone, okay? So my units should give me a millimeters of mercury, a pressure. Let's check our answer here. 760, show your calculator, Mr. Bartlett, times 750, enter, and then divide by 500. So I end up with the answer, 1140, okay? I wanna check my sig figs here. I have two, three sig figs, three sig figs. Oh, 750 has no decimal place, so it's gonna be two sig figs. So my 1140 is gonna get rounded to one, two sig figs, get rid of the fours, rounded down. So I'm gonna have 1100, my only unit left, millimeters of mercury. And again, does this answer make sense? Hey, look what happened to our volumes. Our volumes decreased. We said with our Boyle's law that if I see a decrease in volume, I should see an increase in pressure. And hey, our math showed that because it went from 760 to 1100. This shows me that I have my correct answer for my problem. I'd like you guys to take a look at the rest of these. We will come back together tomorrow and work through more of these together. Okay? But I would hope that now that we have a sense how we use our equations and how we set up problems like this. So try them out and come back tomorrow ready and ready with questions and where you might need some help. All right, have a good one.